Good morning. I guess evening if you're listening to this when it comes out. But um, this it is, is like 5 a.m. Early. for Sabrina. I am watching the sunrise. How lovely. I know. I was shocked when you wanted to do it this early. I'm like, okay. It's fine for me. I'm like, oh, it's almost 9 a.m. We're Lydia's good. a little confused though. She's like, she's doing this thing now where she sits in front of my light. I'm like, is it warm? It must be. She it must it. be. It definitely is. Like I'm already sun. sweating with the lights on. Whew. Uh, this is Two Girls, One Ghost. <gasps> two Girls, One Ghost. And we are your ghostesses. Oh, there's my light. <laughs> and there's my <laughs> the video table. shaking. It's like thunder, <laughs> earthquake. Um, that's Corinne. And I'm Sabrina. Hi. And this is an encounters episode. And you guys, we are so excited our new format starts this week next week yeah next week yeah so stoked wait i also forgot to tell you on the last episode that we recorded uh because you had just gotten back from europe and i think i was just very focused on that i ran into someone who listens to our podcast what at yeah at the roaring 20s party i actually feel it's i've been crippled with guilt about it ever since it happened why this a woman came up and she was like, are you Korean? Well, okay. Let me back up. The yes. Roaring Twenties Party at the Crane Estate in Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. It happens every single year and every single year I go. This is my third year going. Mm-hmm. All of the grass was completely dead. It has been <gasps> so hot. Whoa. I was sweating my ass off. We were literally <laughs> buying like freezer packs of, of alcohol just to put on our bodies and on our necks. Oh my but you, it, it was miserable. Like truly, I got in the car and I cried. I was like, that was so bad. We normally stay the whole time. This time we lasted like two hours. Everyone was dropping like flies. Oh my god. So anyway, I'm carrying these the like the heaviest picnic basket ever filled with (laughs) water and snacks and all the stuff that we didn't even get to because we weren't there nearly long enough. Um but I'm I'm carrying all this. I'm sweating my fucking ass off. I think I'm gonna faint. Like I'm truly heat stroke is upon me and I'm going to perish before I get back to my car. And if someone goes – That would be a good place to haunt though. (laughs) Right? Yeah, beautiful. (laughs) But someone says, are you Corinne? And I turn and there's this woman in the most beautiful 1920s, like the best costume I've ever seen. I was like, oh my God. this I'm so jealous of this costume. It was so, (laughs) so great. Anyway – I feel like I was I was near death and dripping sweat, and so I feel bad that I didn't get to spend as much time <laughs> chatting because I was like literally about to pass out. Um, oh, but yeah, that's we so took a photo. Cute. I can't remember her name, but she just moved here from Hawaii. So, welcome to oh. Massachusetts from Hawaii. What a wow! That's what a, a band aid rip that will be. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, okay, that's amazing. Our friend, kind of similar. Our friend Allie was on yes. the plane the other day and looks over and saw the stranger next to her, our, our new BFF, was listening. Stranger to Allie, friend to us. Friend to us, yes. <laughs> was listening to Two Girls, One Ghost. And she was like, wait a second, I need to send this to Sabrina and Corinne. And sure It enough, was so cool. When Allie sent that to us, I felt like the text was so out of context. I thought Allie was just yes. on the plane next to one of our friends. I go, LOL, who's that? She was I like, it was like Lee or uh, someone. Yeah. Exactly. Me too. Yeah. I thought it was one of our friends listening. Yeah, she was it like, is. it's it's someone sitting next to me on the airplane. I'm like, who? <laughs> She's like, I mean, I don't know. I'm I like, don't know. What? <laughs> what do you mean? I do have, so I saved cool. their, they sent an email, so I have it saved for eventually. Okay. Perfect. Yay. Right. Leia actually is helping me out because I think I woke up paler than I went to sleep and the light <laughs> is just illuminating my pale skin. I was just on vacation. What is happening? Oh, it's okay. Leia's in front of the light, but you know what? This is an early morning encounters. It is what it is. If you're watching video, you get to experience the ambiance of uh, Sabrina in the darkness and Leia's lovely yeah, beefy body covering light. Look vampire self um we have ghost stories that's what we do yes. here should i Let's start us them. off mm-hmm. and then okay. next week we'll also have encounters because now we'll have encounters every single week every week okay let me start with this is a story from our listener julia 
and it's called My Childhood Ghost Didn't Know She Was Dead? Question mark. Oh, now I already feel bad. I'm like, oh no. (laughs) I hope in a good way. I hope it was just like living the best life. Yeah. um, Yeah. Okay. Well, hello, ghostesses. My name is Julia, a longtime listener from Richmond, Virginia. I love listening to you. Here comes the light. <laughs> I can see Liz's shadow on the wall being projected, her walking back and forth. You just ate. Why don't you go sit down? No, you could sit there. Yeah, you do what you want to do. It's your day. Um, I love listening to you on my hour-long commute to teach high school art. Seems fitting, fitting to be the quirky art teacher listening to spooky stories at 6 in the morning before painting and drawing all day. Anyway, my story takes place when I was a child back in the house I grew up in. It was a small trailer in a not-so-great neighborhood in Virginia Beach, and it wasn't glamorous by any means, but as a kid, I was excited to live to, next to the beach. We oh, moved in too. when Vicariously I was Vicariously through this listener, I'm like, oh, that sounds so nice. I see You're myself to the there. water. Yeah. The smell of low tide. Mm. We moved in when I was around three or four years old, and being in that trailer just never felt right. I had a paranoia to no end and would run from room to room, feeling as as if people were watching me. So, the title of this email implies that the ghost haunting our trailer did not know she was dead. You know, I'm not even certain if it was a female spirit, but my gut tells me she was. So this story will mesh my own memories, which aren't complete, let's be honest, I was young, with my mom's memories that she told me after the fact as to not freak out her children during the haunting. (laughs) I recall our microwave buttons constantly beeping, like always. I would ask my mom, why is the microwave always beeping even though we aren't cooking? And she would just reply, oh, it's probably just broken. I was a kid and adult I thought things. they were going to say, it's probably just the ghost. <laughs> I was a kid and adult things like microwaves made no sense to me, so I just believed her. But it got annoying to all parties involved, and eventually my mom got us a new one. But it did not stop. My mom tried everything, moving it to a new outlet, leaving it unplugged even, and then nothing worked. Unplugged? Unplugged. That is where... You cannot deny. Like any skeptic at that point, what is your excuse? What do you think is There's happening an- now that it's been unplugged? That's what no. I'm curious about. Yeah. There's so many examples of this. Ghosts are the energy. You don't need to plug it in. Mm-hmm. Nothing seemed to work. We also had one of those cool 90s touch lamps that everyone had. You touch the base of it to turn it on and keep tapping to adjust the brightness. That too would go on and off, adjusting its own levels on its own. I thought nothing of this, but it seemed to bother my mom as that lamp was quickly removed from our house. So, (laughs) some failing electronics, how can one pin this on the paranormal? We already know how, but. (laughs) (laughs) Julia says, you see, my mom later confided to me what was really going on. It seemed we had a spirit who didn't know she had passed on. Remember that microwave? Well, turns out it wasn't just typing in random numbers. No. It would put in 911 over and over again. Oh, stop. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, I have chills. I have chills. Yes, you heard that right. 911, like the people you call in an emergency. I hypothesized that maybe she was reliving a part of her life, desperately trying to call for help. Maybe she didn't know what was going on, and 911 is who we think to call when all else fails. I'm not sure, but the fact, but that fact sticks with me. It could have been random numbers, but no, it was always 911. This didn't last ha- forever, though. One day, it just stopped. Silly kid me didn't even really realize it had stopped, as I didn't pay much attention to the events to begin with. One day, my mom had had enough. While we were out of the house, she laid her foot down and kindly told the spirit that they were unfortunately no longer alive, and needed to leave the house as it's ours now. She would scare. She was scared that things would escalate, and she didn't want us growing up with that. But after she laid down the law, it seems as all stopped. Or did it? My feelings of paranoia never fully went away until I moved out at 18, and my mom actually got rid of the microwave, and we really never used one again in that house. 
I have many more stories if you want to hear them. Yes, we do. Like how I remembered my past life in a dream and my mom confirmed it with what I said as a child or the time I used a spirit box in a Civil War cemetery. Just wanted to say thanks for all you two do to build such a great community and podcast. You make my long commute so much more tolerable and I don't feel so alone in my curiosities with the unknown. With that, I hope your technology doesn't become a method of communication with the otherworldly. See you on the other side, Julia. I need to know about the past <laughs> life memories. I know. And having that confirmed. Definitely need to know all, all of those. All of the above. Stories. Well, oh my gosh. Okay. This is making me so sad. This is this reminds me of the movie The Others, you know, with Nicole Kidman mm -hmm. not really realizing that she and her children are dead and just assuming that there's an intruder, assuming assuming that there are emergencies around them, but not really yeah. understanding exactly what's happening. That it's depressing to think that that a spirit could be so incredibly confused to the point where they truly are scared in their I know. state. And d typing 911 over and over into the microwave because there's no other way to express or like try to find help. Yeah, the need for help. Oh my gosh. It did make me wonder too. Do we know what year this was? Mm, I don't. It, Julia said that they had those 90s lamps. So I'm imagining the 90s. Oh, okay. Because yeah, I was also thinking, I mean, obviously 911 is in America, the the emergency line, call the police. But at the same time, I was also making me wonder if it was like 911, you know, oh. like a, this is who I am and how I died and I need help moving on. I think but it if it was that. in the 90s, then no. Yeah. It was truly and just I do, call for authorities. Yeah. It does make me sad. It's like I wish, because it seems like. You know, there's sometimes where you're like, oh, this spirit might just be connected to the land. It does feel like it's connected to this home specifically. Yeah. So I, want, I wonder I wish what there happened was a way, to the... I know. To know. Right. What, what happened to this spirit? And then also what happened to the spirit after her mom was saying, you got to, you got to go. Maybe. Was it? They were able to move on because they realized that they were dead. I hope so. Yeah. Me but too. is it also just like it what is time in general, but also like in the spirit world? Could it have just been where the spirit is still there but was just spiraling and trying to figure out what was going on with them and entered this Yeah, I don't know. You no know, depressive state for what they felt like was a few days, but to us maybe was thirty years. Did I tell you about that book I just read? No. It's called Under the Whispering Door by I think his name is T J Klein. Um, it's really good. It's but it's about like when you die. Well, it's about a, a specific man who's like old, like kind of commodity and mean and not great, and he dies. Mm -hmm. And he's when you die, you're you have like a someone who like guides you to the afterlife. Oh, and I love this idea of every person gets someone to guide them. Yeah, it's a, it's reminding me now of the Midnight Library, which I finally read. Oh, so good. It was Love good. It. it does make you think, all those books where you're kind of like in the in-between, what does truly happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, hopefully we don't find out for a long time because <laughs> we perish, but rather because spirits decide to tell us the secrets of the universe. Yes. Or, or aliens uh, tell me as well. You know. <laughs> or <Either one>. aliens. <laughs> I'm open to either. Okay. I have one. Uh, this is called Two Evils, One House. And it is from Ooh. our listener, our phantom, Heather. Uh, and also trigger warning for anybody who's listening. This story is is going to involve uh, violence and child abuse. Okay. Hey, hello. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Like, like everyone, I'm obsessed with the podcast. I'm constantly walking around my house with earbuds in. And I recently discovered it and have binged almost the first two years already. And this was recent that this was sent in. And got many more episodes to catch up on, Heather. Yes, you do. I welcome. have many ghost stories from childhood. Like you guys have mentioned, negative energies swarm to bad situations. I grew up in an old farmhouse near Madison, Wisconsin, like basement access outside cellar doors and dirt floor old. And on top of the house, just being old and creepy in general, 
My father was also an abusive drunk. One night, I can't remember why, my dad had hit me and he sent me to bed without dinner. I ran to my bedroom, which was the master room in the house. I shared it with my older sister, and the bedroom opened up to the hallway. On the left was sliding doors to a walk-in closet, and on the right was a bathroom that we refused to ever go in or use. If you walked down the hall to my room, it opened up to the actual room part, slanted ceilings, and all the glory. And I went into the room, I flopped on to the bed, into my pillow, and I cried. I'm crying so hard. I'm shaking. I'm gagging. All of a sudden, I feel a hand rub on my back and a womanly voice whisper, shh, dear. I whipped my head up and I looked around and out of nowhere, I hear my dad yell from the bottom of the stairs, hey, Heather, I'm so sorry. Come back down. I felt relieved since I was so scared that he had touched me. So I ran back down the stairs and I went over to my dad and I said, hi. And he once again hit me. I screamed and he sent me to my room for the rest of the night. Turning around and once again going to my room, I heard a laugh. It was a low and barking like laugh. I jumped under my covers, squeezed my eyes shut, and I went to sleep. Another time, me and my older sister were playing hide and seek. I was hiding in our room when you walked into the slanty ceiling space. Straight ahead was a window and my bed was to the right of the doorway opening and my dresser was to the window to the right. And my dresser was by the window to the right. My sister had her dresser on the left side of the wall next to the doorway and her bed by the wall space next to the window. There was enough space between the wall and the dresser that she had an art easel there. Old school child style. So under that was where I was hiding. I heard movement from my bedroom hallway and I peeked between the wall and the dresser, looking towards the doorway. And when I looked, that is when I caught a woman wearing a white old style nightgown. My five-year-old self screamed. When I turned my head towards it, a white floating mist with two red eyes was right in front of my face. (gasps) As you can probably imagine, growing up was interesting. (laughs) I have more stories if you're interested. One time, one of them is about what happened to my son when he was one year old and in childcare. Uh, Let me know if you want to hear them. I'll see you on the other side. Heather. Okay. Yeah, we would love to hear them. Yeah. Heather, Heather, I'm so sorry. So sorry. You and your sister, yeah, didn't get to fully be kids in your home because you you had – the the fear and the the need to yeah keep safe in your own and on top of that for like you know there to be multiple spirits in this house that are feeding off of that energy and taunting you like that's just right i was so i was so glad at first when i had heard the first part of the story where the spirit was you know scratching her back and the kind of the way that corinne you talk about the spirit that growing up would In, comfort you like that. But yeah. then for it to immediately, I mean, maybe there were multiple spirits coming through, I don't know, but for then for it immediately to come back or another spirit come in that's like growling and menacing and laughing at the situation is so heartbreaking. Right. And it makes me think that it's the same entity, especially because Heather again saw this a woman that sounds like it could be the same woman that that had that voice but then that woman turned into these red eyes right in front of her so it's it seems like there's some spirit or some entity that either started out as this woman or has taken on the appearance of that woman and is using that to kind of lower people's guards and then so unfair contribute to the anxieties and the terror that it was within this house I do not like that. No. No, I do not. It makes me wonder too when demons and when entities put on the appearance of someone normal, someone trustworthy, Mm -hmm. you know, not like a normal like creature like thing that you would immediately be scared of. Was this woman in the white nightgown once someone who lived in this house that the demon was like, that's a that's an appearance that I'm going to use in the future. I, yeah, I don't – where do they get their inspiration is what you're asking? Yeah. Where is their know. Pinterest board? How do they choose <laughs> their next outfit? That's a good question. I wonder if they can – you know how 
they say you can't dream anyone you've never seen before, even if, mm-hmm. the, but you can dream like someone you passed on the street that you didn't really engage with. So it does feel like it's a stranger. Yeah. Like, I wonder if they have a, the ability to tap into that and they pick just like a random person from your have collection. You, have you seen all those videos on TikTok of people who are pretending? I think it's called, I, I'm not a gamer, but I think it's called NPC, like a non player oh, character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And people are doing the, they're pretending to be them and reenacting yeah. things in real life. And some people are so good. Like they look like Sims. They look like the NPCs. It is freaky. It makes me kind of lose a bit of my reality when I watch those videos. I'm like, we are all freaked out. Part of the uh, the game. We are Sims players. We are. We're all in this matrix yeah. together. Telling ghost stories, baby. So that's and our reality. You know what? What's that movie? Um it was a movie that came out like a year or two ago with jo- um, Jodie Comer's in it from Killing Eve. And it's about like the video game. Oh, why am I blanking? Oh, I don't know. All right. Well, someone comment it below because I forget. Comment below. <laughs> Tell us what we did wrong, please. <laughs> Tell me how bad my brain is. It's early. <laughs> That's my excuse. Okay. So my first story was a ghost that didn't know that they had died. This story mm-hmm. is from our listener, Sam, and it's called, I Know I Died, But Somehow I'm Still Here. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, ooh. Okay. Is this a ghost emailing us or is this like a timeline hop situation? You'll find out. Okay. okay. And it just goes right into it. <laughs> These premonitions are scaring me. This is, oh, you know, when people give the prompts online and they're like, tell me a scary story within six words. This is, this is that. That's the <laughs> sentence right there. No, thanks. The premonition started when I was pretty young with small things. I could tell you when the phone was about to ring with an important call or when a family member was about to knock on the door. I knew days in advance when my best friend was going to ask me to come over. I knew when something bad was going to happen, sometimes not knowing details, but would know who was going to be hurt or upset. As I got older- That's so tough. It is, especially not knowing like the specificity, like you can't do anything about it. Yeah. As I got older, they shifted. For example, I had called my dad to say I was going down to visit my dying aunt after having a dream I was at her bedside while she passed only for him to tell me that she passed overnight. I had a dream I was in the hospital with my dad and grandma because he was sick, only to get a call in the morning that him and my grandma were both sick and in the hospital. Several times I have scrolled through social media and come across someone's profile who I hadn't talked to in years and couldn't seem to scroll past. In stalker fashion, I felt like I needed to check in several times a day. And generally, by the end of that day, I would see that they had passed. Sometimes. Oh, I can't even imagine going through that day. Just the stress. And it, the first time it happens, like, you don't think anything of it. But then for it to, you know, I don't know how often this happens for Sam, but. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's just a feeling, but most of the time it's a dream or a daydream. A lot of the time, they are someone dying. Dying. It's like I'm watching it or even right by their side, holding their hand as they die, feeling every emotion and pain they feel as their soul leaves their body. I'd like to put a trigger warning on this part because it's gruesome. So pause for two seconds if you want to skip ahead. This is a trigger warning episode. Yeah. I had a dream the other night, but I'm terrified it was a premonition because I can still feel the ache of what happened. I was driving a few miles from my house when someone cut me off on the road. I honked and he got angry and stopped, blocking the road. I swerved to avoid hitting him and came to a stop in the road. He stormed out of his car and quickly walked to mine with a gun in his hand. As he got to my door, he raised it, pointing it at my head. 
My only reaction oh. was to look back and make sure my kids were not in the car, then look ahead out of the front window. I heard the bang and felt the pressure through the side of my head, and for days after, I had a headache on the side my he- of my head in the same spot, and some days it's still sore there. In this dream, I know I did not survive. First off, I'm sure it's nearly impossible to survive that kind of injury. And on top of that, I felt my soul come out of my body and saw the aftermath in third person before I jolted awake. It's one of those dreams where I'd like to assume it's not a premonition, but I can still tell you the exact spot where I was shot. So has this premonition just not happened yet? Or did I die on another timeline and jump to the one I'm currently in? Or was it for once just a bad dream? I love your podcast and listen to it every day. My life is chaotic. It's a haunted mess. So I have many other stories I will be sending you. Thank you, Sam. Sam, I'm horrified for you. Yeah. That is so scary. There's road rage really does terrify me. Yes. Yes. But you can't uh, trust other people. No, no, you can't. What's tough with this is because Sam has had so many premonitions, it's hard Mm -hmm. to know if this is just a warning to be careful and to avoid confrontation with this person in the future. I know. Or if this is truly like it happened and Sam is now left forward to another timeline. Is it picking up life where it was lost in the, the previous life? It's so weird. Like I, I, a part of me really does believe in that idea that you jump timelines if Mm -hmm. you die in one, but then that, but then it's like, at what point does this life end for you? Right? Because at what point do you become a ghost and how is that decided? And so it's hard for me to fully process what accepting that theory looks like yeah because if there are infinite lives and infinite possibilities the chances of you well uh, yeah i guess what is your longest life because we as humans our bodies have an expiration date at some point we don't live forever so do you keep jumping but but then it's like wouldn't everyone conscious the consciousness like is there one version that just jumps from every single life and who even yeah. is the other version? Is it a split consciousness where some of you is stronger and more aware than other versions is of you? Is that why I'm so tired? I don't have my full consciousness. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Girl, where Billie are Eilish you? Billie Eilish said it. When we all fall asleep, where do we go? That's you know, what's happening? Mm, we yeah. I mean, that is – that's that's a wild experience. Yeah, I hope it's not have. a premonition. I really – I really hope so too. And if it is, Sam, I hope that, I don't know, if there's a way to not honk at cars if they cut you off in the future. I don't know. Yeah. Just, just to be I safe. I do wonder. I don't want to know. I know. Or if you can remember who that guy. But don't pull over. You know, like just keep, just keep driving going. or something. Or I don't know. Back yourself But the guy blocked first. the road in this story. I don't know. Oh, it's so frustrating. Oh, I... Sam, I hope you stay safe. I know. It's scary because there are stories like that that, that truly happens. It's in the news every once I, in a while. Yeah, it's awful. Which is now bringing me to my next thought, which is let's say Sam that did happen to Sam. Yeah. And in a different version of Sam's life, Sam was shot and killed in a road rage incident and is now, oops, blooping to this new life. Yeah. Is there someone else who remembers Sam dying in a previous life that blooped to the same timeline as Sam? Oh. You know, it's we've well, had how a few does that stories. Work? Right. And like, how do you know? I mean, I've said it a thousand times. The OA, yeah. I cannot believe it didn't get renewed, but that was going to essentially be the, the next season, remember? Yeah. Two of them blipped at different times mm-hmm. into a new life. Yeah. So I don't know. It makes – it's a thinker. It's a thinker. It is a thinker. I don't know. Yeah, what do you have? This is half the Marvel movies. <laughs> I know. It's all Doctor Strange. Give me the answers, please. 
<laughs> Help us. Help us. Okay. This is called sleep paralysis, astral projection, and possessed dolls. Oh, the combo. Okay. The, the trifecta, baby. I'm glad I'm up for the day. Not going to <laughs> Hi, ladies. I discovered your podcast a couple of weeks ago, and I love it. This was back in 2019, so okay. hopefully Emma's still with us. Please. I had been be looking... Us. I had been looking for something to quench my thirst for spook and your show does the job. I've been binge listening since I found the podcast and I'm not quite caught up yet. So I hope you haven't changed emails since the last year. No, we never have. So Mm-mm. send us your listener stories. Uh, I have three stories for you. The first two are short, but require some exposition. So please bear with me. I've experienced sleep paralysis many times in my life and only discovered a few years ago that, for me at least, it was caused by sleeping on my back. As of now, I only sleep on my side or on my stomach. The most terrifying time this happened, I was visiting my boyfriend, now fiancé, Jake. I was taking a nap next to him while he played video games and I woke up. I could not move and I remember actually hyperventilating. I was aware of Jake's presence next to me, but I was clearly not hyperventilating in the physical realm as he did not react or try to wake me up. Since then, I've had a few more moments of sleep paralysis before I made the connection to sleeping on my back. The most prominent one happened during my senior year of high school. I just turned 18 and immediately fled from my mother's house to live with my best friend, and their parents were kind enough to take me in and let me take over the guest room. One night, I was sleeping in the guest room when the sleep paralysis hit me again. But this time was different. If I tried hard enough, I could move my spectral form, but only a little bit. <gasps> oh my I gosh. knew I was asleep, but wanted some sort of evidence that I had really been astral projecting, and I got it. Oh my On the nightstand next to me, I kept my laptop and a small webcam that I used to chat with friends. It was pretty inexpensive as far as webcams go, so I felt like it would be okay to experiment with and not have to worry <laughs> too much about the cost. Plus, it was the only small thing within reach. So with my spectral form, I grabbed the webcam and I threw it across the room. That was about oh. all of the movement I had energy for. The next day, the webcam was still- That's a lot of still, energy. That's a lot of energy. I feel like that's more than a lot of spirits are able to do. Yeah. Man. I mean, M must have wanted to do it so bad. Yeah. So cool. The next day, the webcam was still on the nightstand, but when I went to use it, it no longer worked. I think the objects also have spectral forms and that in displacing the camera's spectral form, I somehow broke it in the physical realm. I can move a little further away every time I astral project now, but it takes so much energy to do it that I don't really try it very often. I never ever thought of objects having astral yeah forms as well that's so fascinating it's it's so interesting that's yeah truly so fascinating the next story took place after i graduated from high school i went to stay with jake and his family again i was taken in by wonderful and generous people his mother is a presbyterian minister so out of respect to her religion i slept in the guest room while jake remained in his room almost immediately i got a bad vibe when i was in the guest room I didn't want to complain because I didn't want to sound ungrateful, so I ignored the feeling and I settled in for bed. This is where things got creepy. Oh, no. There were three porcelain (laughs) dolls in the corner of the room on their own tiny bed. I didn't like them, and I spent a long time staring at them. Their eyes were closed, which brought me a little bit of comfort, but I turned off the lights and I went to set my phone on the nightstand. I missed, and it went on the floor. Sighing, I turned the light back on back on only to find that the doll's eyes were now open (laughs) i have never been so afraid in my life i sprinted down the hall to jake's room explained what happened and sleepy and confused he walked back to the guest room with me and threw a blanket over the dolls (laughs) i pointed out that they could still that they would still be in the room with me and he moved them into the office this wasn't very helpful as he put them right in front of the office which i had to pass by to get to the bathroom (laughs) so we ended up switching bedrooms but those dolls still freak me out to this day thanks for reading i hope i didn't spook you too bad see you on the other side m 
Okay, well, Em, you're powerful as can be. So I know. Cool. Um, teach me your ways. That's where you need to go into your spectral self and just I know. punch the spectral dolls. <laughs> and be like, Stop. Close their eyes again. Mm. Yeah. Do not open your eyes again. <laughs> um, I just – I spent last night – because for our new format, I'm first, and I'm really excited about what I picked. But I spent the night researching last night, so I was up really late researching and doing some things. And just haunted objects are so dang terrified. That's a teaser for mm-hmm. everyone. But they're so – it just it's, it feels so unfair. It's like you don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. You don't know when they're going to act. And when it's doll form and you're sleeping with them, mm -mm. nope. Yeah. I mean, all of this, we've had so many stories of life-size Barbie dolls coming to life and like fully moving throughout the room. There's too many examples. This is why the Chucky movies were successful in in being scary because you never know what's going to happen and how much something's going to move or what they're going to be able to do. I mean, that's the whole Conjuring series is – Annabelle the doll that sparked yeah. that Gosh. in the, the astral projecting I think part of the reason I love this encounters and M's experiences so much is because I think discovering that you have sleep paralysis or essentially like astral project when on your back would make me think that some people would be like oh well It's not something spooky. It's actually just like this weird phenomenon that happens when I'm sleeping on my back. So I won't sleep on my back. But I love that M went a step further and was like, I'm going to prove that there really is something happening to me when I'm experiencing this. And I'm going to like exit my body a little bit and test things out and shove things. Like it's a real experience. Yes. Yes. That's what I Is it just easier for your soul to – Release some know. of the tether, I guess, when you're on your back? It's a good question. I mean, just to be able to astral project, I feel like it's such a unique – if you can do it, I feel like you're just a magical human being, and I I wish I had more skills. Yeah. Well, you love aliens, and it's making me think perhaps when we're in that position, it's like an easy way to be beamed up to the mothership. What if – what if the ozone is just like a giant magnet? Now I'm getting like real conspiracy. So you- Forget science. <laughs> there, the whole sky is a magnet, and we all just get swooped up to the sky. Oh my gosh, swooped up. Okay, I'll start sleeping on my back then. Swoop yeah. me up. Give also, it a try. Look, you can see the sun coming in. Wow, beautiful. On my face. Ah. <laughs> Are you singing Ariel? Yeah, I don't know. Little mermaid <laughs> felt fitting. <laughs> what do I do next? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a story. I'll just do astral projection because um, you just we're on the topic. Okay, Perfect. this is from our listener Vanessa, and it is called "A Nighttime with Sabrina's Blue Bee." And my boyfriend astral projects during sexy time, question mark? Oh. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Getting a little dirty. Little Hi, two ghostesses. girls, one ghost after dark tonight. Yes. This Hello. morning. Well, Hello. whenever you listen. It's never too early. My name is Vanessa, and I have two stories for you. The first one has to do with Sabrina's story she shared on Campfire Stories about having a blue bee in her mouth after it being in her drink. Yes, I do not love remembering that moment. (laughs) I still feel it in my mouth. Oh, (sighs) That same (laughs) night, I had a dream. I cannot recall how I got where I was, but all I remember was having a blue bee in my mouth, and all of a sudden, my body in the dream started shaking and vibrating violently as the bee was trying so hard to escape, but I could not open my mouth. It was almost like my mouth was sealed shut and all I could do was scream with my mouth closed as my body continued to vibrate. I hate this. Mm -hmm. I suddenly wake up and I immediately hear an echo of a scream. I'm so shaken up and scared that I don't open my eyes as I search for my phone to check the time. It was 3.13 a.m. 
I turn on my lights and sit up to pull myself together, and I realize that something was wrong. Every night when I go to bed, I have a little basket by my pillow where I put my nighttime essentials. I love love this. I need to ad- adopt this. My chapstick, lotion, my light remote, etc. When I turn on my lights, my basket and all of the things that were inside of it were thrown across the room. This experience is unexplainable. It could have been paranormal, it the echo of the scream I heard when I woke up, waking up at 3 a.m. AM, my my basket and things being thrown across the room, but I also think it could have been me. I had night terrors when I was a teenager where I would cry and scream in my sleep, yet I had not had one in years. Perhaps the echo of the scream I heard was my scream and the basket of things being thrown was me throwing them in my sleep. I guess I might never really know, but that night really spooked me. I like that I instilled this terrible night terror upon Uh, Vanessa. I know. (laughs) But I, now I'm now the whole my mind is going straight to astral projection and, and slapping it and everybody being way more powerful than they know. <laughs> Everyone is, can harness this energy. We just have to figure out what triggers it. Let's do a group astral projection. Meet you guys in the astral plane later. Great. Meet up a TGO. Yeah, we'll meetup. do a live show, but in <sighs> astral form. So everybody <laughs> just come sit on your couch, but join us. Yes. <laughs> at the astral theater. <laughs> <laughs> leave your bodies behind october 31st <laughs> okay my second story consists of adult themes so if there are any listeners with kiddos uh, maybe it's a good time to skip forward my boyfriend believes in all things supernatural and paranormal as i do the only difference is that he's such a scaredy cat when it comes to it and tries to avoid all things related a few weeks ago he caught me off guard with a question babe do you know about astral projection? And I answered with, yes, why? Tell me why this man explains to me how he believes that he astral projects while we do the deed. At first I laugh because I think he's just being dramatic, but he continues to explain to me in all seriousness how when he climaxes, he can actually see himself when it happens. No way. At this point... I'm flabbergasted because I cannot believe what, it, with what I'm hearing with my own two ears and that after four years, I am finding out that my boyfriend can astral project. He proceeds to tell me that he has also had experiences where he can be in one room, but feel and see himself in another room. Dr. Strange who? As I'm taking everything in, my jaw is dropped to the floor, my thoughts running 200 miles per second thinking how this changes our sex life and his life, and he says he has no control over it and doesn't seem to like, want any control over it. He says that he does not mind it happening naturally, but I think he might be a bit scared, which I don't blame him. Thanks Mm -hmm. for reading my stories. I've been listening since the beginning and it's been a joy to see you gals grow and accomplish so much much love and i'll see you on the other side vanessa oh my gosh i there's there's no way i would be able to engage (laughs) in sexy time ever again without being fully fixated on like seeing the astral form when it happens i'd be like i this isn't even about me this is fully a paranormal (laughs) investigative experience right now it doesn't surprise me though because i feel like that's such a physical emotional like there's so much energy that happens in that moment that i get that your spirit form would be like whoa wowza like gotta get out of here slingshot out and back in yeah gotta get out of here for a second this is so much (sighs) oh my god that is wild. I'm. I don't know why this is. This is the thought <laughs> that I had, or this is gonna make no sense to most people. But do you remember the episode of Hey Hey Arnold? Probably not. Where he? I mean, because he lived in New York City and he had like a whole skylight above his bedroom, uh-huh. and sometimes he would see creepy things. And there was this one where this guy was like, this ghost was looking down through his skylight. But that's kind of what I pictured happening to the boyfriend it's like 
you know, you're like lying in your bed and you get like slingshotted so far up and that, that you're like looking down on yourself almost from the sky, from outer space. And then you get sent right back in. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how long it lasts if it's just like that, just that moment. And, and also, also he can see things that are happening in other rooms. Exactly. That's so fascinating. Is there a m- moment where there needs to be more information here? Vanessa, think- we need to do a study on your boyfriend. Please send him over here. Send his astral being to us. <laughs> we Vanessa needs to do a study. Yes, like, that's true. Pay, pay, pay a little bit closer attention to him, I think, when he's just like sitting in a room. Because I'm wondering if he's zoned out, like if he's so in a meditative yeah, state doing something that he's un- unintentionally leaving behind his physical being and Ashley projecting and like doing stuff around the house. Like, does she walk by right. and he's like <laughs> just in another room? Or it sounds stare. like maybe when his energy is so high, like what if like when he's super excited, he just like glitches out of his body for a second? That is a huge superpower. <laughs> That's incredible. I want that. Uh, I didn't know that was an option when people say, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? But now I think it's this. Excitement glitching? Yeah. And just, yeah, I guess astral projecting. Oh, okay. Okay. Just as a whole. But then I like, I think it's cute that the excitement could like accidentally throw you into it. So much energy. Ah. Yeah. It's like the anger and frustration gets the, the Hulk going. Yes, yes, yes. But this is a positive version of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All righty. We're just we're going all astral paralysis. I love everything it. this episode unintentionally. Okay. So this is from Grace. Hey, Ghost says I've been listening to your podcast for a couple of months now, and I love it so much. The comedy you guys bring into your readings is so entertaining to listen to. Thanks. <laughs> I've <laughs> already. <laughs> I've already sent in one of my paranormal stories, but this time I want to tell you about something my dad experienced. He's a big skeptic about my experiences that I would tell him about, but he firmly believes what happened to him. Oh my gosh. (laughs) And he thinks it was caused by someone who was no longer alive. Okay, so he believes in ghosts, but only when what happens to him. You know, whatever you need to tell yourselves, it's uh, self-protection here. Yeah, you're just hoping it's a one-time occurrence and doesn't just exist in the world. In around 2004 slash 2005, I had just been born in 03, my family moved into a new house, one that I still live in today. We moved into a family-friendly neighborhood just in time for my brother to start elementary school. The woman who lived in the house before us lived alone and she had passed away, but we aren't sure if she died in the house. The way Mm. she came off in the story that my dad told me was that her bitterness from her life carried on into her haunting. My parents decided to start some renovations on the interior of the house. And while doing this, they were kind of talking shit about how the interior looked. They thought it was harmless. But my dad would come to find out that karma had him good. Late at night, my dad had heard noises coming from the guest bathroom. It sounded like someone was running a bath, so my dad got up and checked on it. The bathroom was empty, and my brother and I were fast asleep in our rooms. He chalked it up to his imagination, and he went back to bed. Later, though, he heard the same thing. He got up, he checked again, and nothing. He went back to bed and had only been laying there for just a little while when his alarm clock started blasting. It was around 3 Mm a.m., and he had his alarm set for 7 a.m. He turned it off as quickly as he could, but soon after, he felt a presence above him. Suddenly, he felt that presence enter his body, and he was paralyzed. Enter. Enter his body. Possession. It's possession. (laughs) He was screaming at the top of his lungs how because of how scared he was, and this lasted for a couple of minutes until the spirit had finally left his body. What if He was out of breath. What if, though, only his astral being was stuck in bed and his physical body moved around? Ooh, ooh. The Uno Reverso. It's creepy. Because it, I'm thinking of like the two astral beings, like her basically yeah. choking him out, like pinning him down. 
and then his actual physical body. This is like insidious. It is. Just after the astral being. Okay. Yikes. Um that lasted a couple of minutes until the spirit had finally left his body. He was out of breath and sweaty, and when he looked over, my mom was sound asleep. He shook her awake and asked if she had heard any of that. She was obviously confused and said that she didn't hear any noises. And after hearing this, my dad got out of bed and checked on my brother and I, and we were also in a deep sleep. He believes that what happened to him was the spirit of the woman who lived in the house before us getting revenge on him for insulting her decor. A little <laughs> extreme, if you ask me. Very extreme. But to each their own, I guess. My family never had any other run-ins with this vengeful spirit, but to this day, I feel a lingering presence in that house that I just can't shake. I've cleansed my room with sage plenty of times, but that doesn't stop the paranormal activity. I don't believe that the spirit that lives in my house currently is the same one that nearly tortured my dad, because I feel a male presence, and the spirit seems to just be playful and have no harmful intentions. This new spirit in my house has knocked over cups, rearranged my shoes, and even dropped my DVD player onto the floor in the middle of the night. <laughs> I do practice a mild level of witchcraft, collecting crystals, lighting candles, burning incense, having gather gatherings with my friend group slash coven on holidays or full moons. <gasps> so I don't that. think the spirits see me as much of a threat, but just want to have a little fun spooking me. Thanks for reading. Love you girls. See you on the other side. Grace. Yeah, those definitely sound like two different spirits. But then where'd this new yep. spirit come from? Which I'm I'm like, oh, hi, welcome. Welcome yeah. to your home. Um, what the heck? I don't do not like this. If this spirit that basically possessed her father, Grace's father, like I'm if it's if it's the same spirit of this woman who passed away, like, why is she so angry? Well, that's kind of the thing that I don't get. I don't understand how she could have stopped or moved on because if that was – if she had such a visceral and violent reaction yeah. to them changing decor, I just can't see her – Just being like, okay, move on. Just suddenly getting over it, yeah, yeah, and moving on. So I'm curious what happened in the spirit world side of things for her to yeah. essentially s stop. I don't know. Or maybe she just wanted to do that once to scare them and then it was like – yeah. Okay, I will say, like, I think I'm hopeful that I will have no baggage and I'll be ready to move on and be reincarnated pretty quickly after my life. But I do feel like it would not be fair to do that until I've haunted someone, you know? Mm. So maybe it was mm. like, I just need to ha get this haunting over with. It's always been a lifelong dream to haunt someone, to give someone yeah. sleep paralysis, and then I'm ready to move on. Right. And maybe she was like, let's see how strong I really am, then realized yeah. how much she terrified him and then felt <laughs> awful and kind Sad. of scared herself with how much she did. She was like, oh, my mm. gosh, I can't believe I I did this, that I was capable of this. And then she just felt strength. so racked with guilt. And she was like, you know, I'll just move on. This is their house. They can have it now. OK. Yeah. It does. I like that theory. The The – flip side of this experience uh well no never mind i don't even what? know what i was gonna Were say gonna my train of negative? thought is is nowhere no it's just gone it just left oh okay well, i have no idea what i was about to say i like your looked astral up being and left. all the thoughts were gone <laughs> <laughs> that happens to me far too much and i'm like what maybe that is like your astral being jumping yeah. to somewhere else it's like You've i started the, the sentence i had something to say what was it <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's gone. This is from our listener, Laura, and it's called Pele's Curse is Real, the time my klepto brother pissed off a volcanic, volcanic goddess. Mm. Mm. This is a first for us. I know. Actually, it's funny. It reminds me of the story. I think some a listener had sent us so her brother had stolen a penny from a voodoo shop in New Orleans. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello, ladies. I'm a rather new listener and just finished episode 130 where you talk about Pele, and I knew I had to tell you the story about the time my brother triggered her curse. The summer before I started high school back in 2011, my parents took my brother and I on a trip to Hawaii. One day, we visited Hawaii, Na Hawaii Volcanoes National Park on the Big Island. In the visitor center, there was a wall dedicated to Pele and her curse. The wall is covered with rocks that 
have been returned and letters from people begging for forgiveness and explaining what the curse did to them. My brother is one of the biggest non-believers in the paranormal that I know and didn't believe in the curse one bit. So he decided, even after all of the warnings, to take a rock from the volcano without telling us. It wasn't until a few months later after we got back that things started going horribly wrong in my family. My Jaji, Polish for grandfather, almost died of severe heart failure, and my dad had a pretty bad stroke and then a few months after the stroke was diagnosed with bladder cancer. I don't know how my mom found out my brother had stolen a rock, but she found out and was pissed. She was ready to strangle my brother when she figured out what he had done, and I don't blame her. My family had been going through a lot. She took the rock from my brother, wrote an apology note begging for the curse to be lifted, and sent it back to Hawaii. A few weeks later, my Jaji got better, and then my dad went into remission and has had a clean bill of health ever since. My skeptical brother all these years later still denies the rock had anything to do with our string of bad luck and that it was all a coincidence, but my mother and I know it was the curse and that that curse of Pele is real. I had to share my experience with you. I moved to New Hampshire and my brother moved to Boston a year ago, and I absolutely hey. love to hear Corinne talk about New England. I spent the last year visiting and exploring haunted cemeteries and other locations and documenting my adventures on TikTok uh, at Larry the Witch if you want to check it out. I have so many other stories like the time my friend convinced me the ghost I saw was Bloody Mary scaring me for life or the time the ghosts of Gettysburg called me out by name. I'll send those (gasps) another time. Love the podcast. Stay spooky. Never change. See you on the other side. Laura. We need to hear all of those experiences. Yes, we do. Please email us. Yes. But also, oh my gosh, that's too coincidental. And you have the evidence of thousands of people before you experiencing horrible things, health issues, tragedies, bad luck in their own lives after taking something from Pele. Yeah. And I'm just glad that Laura's mom found the rock and was able to send it back and apologize and like that that everyone's okay now, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. I also restore the heart of Tefiti. It's like, you know, when you go to a hotel and they have a book of haunted records, like of people's encounters. I want so badly to go to this national park museum and read all the letters. Right. So badly. Wait, was it? Was it when we went to the Bell Witch Cave? Did they have some of the letters? I Am think I making so. that up? I think that they had some of them printed out and like on the walls as decor. I think they did. Or maybe I just wished that they did and that's why it's a memory. No, that sounds I don't know. familiar. But now I'm not sure if it's a memory because it's a memory of yours and I'm trying to remember it as a memory. <laughs> I don't know. We'll call them and find but out. That would be incredible. Maybe that's our book idea, Sabrina. Okay, TM everybody. This is ours we just now. Collect everyone else's curse stories. Yeah, like some. Okay. Of, we'll do like a chapter on the most haunted places. Ooh. Like chapter one is the Crescent Hotel, and then we get we collect from all of the the staff and the people oh, who've been there that. all of their experiences. It's I mean we, it's not our experiences, but it's a collection. But we write of others. It. We collect it. But we write it. We do. We're the, we're the researchers. The collectors. Uh, the collector. We are the collectors. We are the collectors. I like it. It's a good book idea. Yeah. Or I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Add it to our list. This is from my... It's called Demons Galore. Oh. But it's not quite what you think it is. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Hi, gals. I thought it would be fun to share some interesting stories of things that I've encountered as a witch that practices spirit work. Just as a heads up, witchcraft and Wicca are different. I know it doesn't seem that way sometimes, but witchcraft is a craft and Wicca is a religion, meaning there are rules like the threefold law that Wiccans have to follow, but the witches do not. Anyway, Hmm. as a spirit worker, I pride myself in making and working mainly with demons and unseelie fairies. 
darker court that focuses on strength and survival, and I wanted to clear some things up about demons. They're not all evil. <laughs> oh. I'm still what? scared, but we're going to learn. We're going to learn from I here. I love to learn. Okay. I'll tell you the story of how I met my first demon who is my best friend who helps me through panic attacks and rough times. When I was in my second year of high school, I, ha I had a health class that was so boring. The walls <laughs> were blank white and I knew everything that the tests were about, so I didn't really have to listen or study. Wish I could go back to that. <laughs> but, but while my teachers were teaching, I was trying to daydream like always since she wouldn't let me read or be on my phone. And something was different. My mind went fuzzy and I couldn't focus. All of a sudden, this man was in front of my class and he was hunched over since he was too tall for the room. His hair was long, black, and messy with twisted ram oh horns God. coming from his head. He wore a torn trench coat, had long black nails, wicked sharp teeth, and no eyes. His eye sockets were hollow. What? I was, this is horrifying. Right? It sounds terrifying. I would collapse in fear. I am uh, shook. But not my. My says, I was stunned by him, not in fear, because for some reason I knew I was safe. But I was stunned in his beauty, which to me sounds a little fae like right? Isn't yeah, that sort yeah. of like the thing where you get sucked in and you're like, oh, beautiful. Yeah. Because that I description couldn't move, though. is terrifying. I know. Which is like, okay. Well, I guess people find different things beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't move, though, and my entire body was frozen. I wasn't even able to speak to ask his name. But he smiled, showing off his teeth, and I heard his name in my head, feeling like if I spoke it, I would be calling him to me. I spent years not knowing what or who he was, but while I would have panic attacks, I would call for him and would feel him touch me with such a gentle touch and take away all of my anxiety. Wow. Later on, I learned that he was a demon that ate excess feelings and he essentially waited for my permission to eat it. He, oh Stop my God. Stop it. This is wild. I want that. <laughs> He was only the start Eats. of my love for demons, and I've met so many that the only reason that they don't like humans are because of the stigma people have against them, so they find it easier to try and avoid people. Well, we've <laughs> not done a good job of making them feel very comfortable, as we yeah. Another story I have is regarding ghosts. I have one about a child and some ghostly lesbian lovers. A friend of mine from our makeshift coven was feeling things happening at her sister's house. Confused and honestly scared because all of the weird energy she was feeling, she called me and asked if I could see what it was. One of my de demon companions, I sent my spirit guide there to bring back whatever spirit was in her home and to bring me the ghost. Weirdly oh. enough, I had found out that it was just a child ghost and she was scared and she was confused and her skin was Aww. blue and she was constantly shaking from the cold. Oh and the only gosh. thing I could think of for the reason that she was there since she didn't know that she had been murdered and was buried without covering so she could feel the cold ground around her. She's currently okay and she's living with someone I trust dearly that makes their house warm just for her. Oh since we have gosh. no clue how to help her pass on. But she calls my friend her mom and she'll follow her around like a little duck. I could cry. I'm like, I wasn't expecting the story after the demon one. I know. The other story I have happened to the same friend. She was having nightmares about a woman trying to kill her with scissors and scared oh. and unable to sleep. She called me for help. Through a lot of help from my demons and tarot card readings, we found this woman was searching for someone. No idea who, but we looked into it more and the woman was unable to communicate as she had let grief and rage take over her body and leave her as a hollow shell of a woman. Oh. So, of course, me and my friend cleansed her and the only issue we had was that there were these three Victorian-looking women that tried to keep us away from the scissor woman. Once, what? once cleaned, the woman fell to her knees and started crying, telling us the story of her and her lover, Rose. We found her name was Olivia, and she fell in love with this beautiful woman whose name was Rose. But her cousins didn't approve of their love, and with the help of their two friends, they convinced 
rose to end her own life. <gasps> Olivia stumbled upon her body and and tried to resuscitate her, but to no avail. So she turned the scissors on herself, hoping to see Rose again. And they did so for a quick sad. moment before they were ripped away from each other once more. I asked my hellhound to sniff out where Rose could be, and after a bit, he managed to find her. When I saw her, I immediately felt chills. She had clawed up on her neck where the rope had once been. Once we had cleansed her as well as we could, we found out that Rose believed that Olivia was dead and that Olivia's cousins had killed her in an attempt oh. to save in an attempt to save her, clawed her neck to get it off. We explained to her that Olivia was dead, but looking for her, and she snapped to attention, and once they saw each other, they ran into each other's arms and kissed each other, crying. They're fine now. They're together. But they refuse to move on in fear that they'll be separated once more. Oh. I don't mind them sticking around. They're just happy to be with each other again. That's all I have for you now, but I'd love to share more stories. Uh, I really wanted to s- you to see how kind demons can be, like the ones that I have. Love, my my. Can we write a book about your life? Because oh my gosh. You're a hero. You brought together these spirits. I'm this is a book. Maya's life is a book. Maya and her demons, it's a book. Right? Or a and movie. it's like a, a magical pairing. Like not you're yes. not just going and helping spirits. You're not helping humans separate from spirits, and you're not helping spirits necessarily like move on all the time you're just matchmaking and making comfortable pairs for people that aren't ready to move on which i really like girl yeah no one's being abandoned no one's being forced to do anything that they don't want to olivia and rose are back together oh i know this it's such a like romeo and juliet situation and uh, my thank you for sharing this information about demons i'm i'm still i think I have a trepidation towards them because of everything we've heard about demons. But I mm-hmm. love this idea of a excess emotion eating demon. Right. Like they, they're not only after souls. They are after like a, other human things. And yeah. if it's taking away emotion that you do not need, please come take my – I have a lot. So please put a hand on me. Eat it. Right. I wonder if Mai knows, too, the distinction between demons who have that sort of prerogative. Like, that's their that's their end goal is doing something that it, – it's a mutualistic relationship, right? Like, it can benefit humans and it yeah. just as much as it benefits the demon. I wonder what the distinction is or what moment defines demons that are that way versus some of the demons that we've heard in stories. You know, like, how do you know – I'm almost thinking – of finding Nemo, where there's <laughs> all of the sharks that are like, fish are friends, not fish. food. Yes. And this is this feels like a little demon pack that has decided that humans can benefit them just as much as they can benefit yeah. humans. But, I, but there's a shit ton of other stories it's that we've like heard where that's not the case. who don't eat humans. It's like Edward Cullen. The Cullens. And, yeah. <laughs> They're like, we can feed off of animals. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> We're in Twilight now. <laughs> do you love twilight oh okay all right i have one more story Great. from m and it is called was i involved in the diet love pass incident greetings amigos oh i love that oh <laughs> me too my name is m they them pronouns I've sent emails before, but I wanted you to know how much I love your podcast. It really scratches that paranormal itch I get every so often. I've been binging again recently to catch up, and it reminded me of something that happened a few months ago. My husband and I were talking about the Dyatlov Pass incident, which I had always been fascinated by, and I had been arguing that there was no way it was just an avalanche. I didn't realize at the time that an avalanche was a bit different than I thought it was. He explained to me that there were studies done on the physics of snow and ice and that an avalanche could be just ice. Enormous blocks of ice that can crush a human and devastate a campsite. That was the moment that something clicked inside of me. This new perspective on avalanches shook me in a way I had never felt before. 
And from that moment on, whenever I think about the Diet Love past incident, I break into a cold sweat. Vivid feelings of alarm, panic, utter terror, and the rush of adrenaline that comes from dragging your broken companions out of their destroyed shelter wash over me. (gasps) I get very brief flashes of icy darkness and my heart races. I don't know if I was involved specifically in that avalanche, but the feelings are as real as if they were from my own memories. So maybe I think in a past life, I was involved in an avalanche that led to my death. That's all I have for now. Uh, But perhaps if I ever do a past life reading, I will unlock some new memories, which I will be sure to share with you ladies. Thank you for reading. Please feel feel free to read on the podcast and stay spooky. M. I mean... Uh, <sighs> I know. It is a, uh, here's what's interesting. I mean, there's a lot that's interesting. Yes. But <laughs> one of the things that intrigues me is that someone going somewhere for the first time or someone hearing a story for the first time can unlock past life memories. Yeah. I think that that's incredible that like they truly consciously exist within us, they're just locked away. And it's just a memory that needs something to to trigger to and trigger bring it, it forward. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that that's really, really interesting. And I wonder how much more exposure to stories like this may unlock more memories in M. But that is just the, the visual of dragging your comrades, your friends, your so colleagues in the sad. night their bodies through this Horrific. and now i'm thinking of maybe that makes sense you know because the some of the some of the people the the mystery of diet love past part of what made it so unbelievable that it could be something like yeah. an avalanche which now there's a lot of new evidence that's come forward that has has made it seem quite possible that that's yeah. what happened but there's just like you know there were the people with like missing eyes and their tongue slit in half and decapitated and And then there's other people that were just like naked and just their bodies far away or fully clothed and like a mile down, down the road. But now it's making sense, you know, like the idea that some people were so severely injured and those that weren't were desperately trying to drag their bodies and to help them out. But then they themselves succumbed to, you know, the the elements. It breaks my heart. It really does. I... Yeah, Em, I'm really curious if you were to do a past life reading because I I just I, – I want everyone to do a past life reading and to send us all the information because I just want to know everything. Like that story – You and I should do one. Want okay. to? Yeah, let's do it. Should we do it? Should that be our Halloween special? Yes. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes. i mean there's so many mysteries that we all have that we we need to unlock we i know i talk about many lives many masters constantly but have you had did you actually ever read it Sabrina? no Mm-mm. no okay I i'll buy the book to. for you one day i think It'll i have it. I'm, oh you do did, did i get, you it, get it for you <laughs> probably i uh, probably like, actually no maybe it. i think i have the boy who was raised by a dog Oh, you gave me that one too. Okay. So then I don't think I have many lives, many masters. Okay. I'll give it to you. Okay. (laughs) Don't buy it. It'll be one of my future gifts. It's on my list. (laughs) All right. I have one to end us on. This is from Liz. It is called Summer Camp with both Sasquatch and Ghosts. This is a good one to end on. (laughs) Good evening, Ghostesses. My name is Liz, and I've listened to your podcast since the very beginning. Wow. I love it dearly, and I even have gotten my father-in-law hooked, so now we geek out over your episodes together. Thanks for putting so much work into entertaining all of us spook seekers. <laughs> I love that, spook <laughs> seekers. Today, I'd like to share two experiences that my brother has had at summer camp. I'll refrain from sharing too many details about the camp for privacy reasons. You can you can just tell us and we yeah, won't tell others. Let us know. Because we just need and to also, know. <laughs> I don't want these stories to scare anyone out of sending their kids there. Nah, that's a good point. Mm. 
This summer camp, located in northern Minnesota, was founded in the 1950s. I feel like this is a lot of information. People are going to be able to figure it out already. <laughs> it was founded in the 1950s and has grown to accommodate approximately 250 campers and 90 staff each week for 12 weeks, June through August. Camp programs include horseback riding, sailing, fishing, canoeing, hiking, mountain biking, and much more. My brother and I attended this camp as kids, and we loved it. So much so that we both became staff members upon coming of age. Oh my he was gosh. a counselor and myself as a camp photographer. As a counselor, my brother was given one night off per week, which he was allowed to leave the camp property and get away from the children that he was in charge of for the week. A colleague of ours had a family cabin on a nearby lake that staff would actually walk to. And for this reason, it was a popular night off location. Plus, it had the amenities of a good time, video games, food, air conditioning, etc. My brother opted to join a crew headed out to what we called the Cooper Cabin, named for the lake, not the family, and staff had a curfew at midnight, but my brother decided to head back a bit earlier than the rest of the group, around 9.30 to 10 p.m. So he begins his solo walk on the trail from Cooper Cabin back to the camp. This trail is carved into a hill where the lake lies about 10 feet below to the left, and the hill continues steeply up to the right. About halfway back to camp, my brother hears a small rock skid past him. He said it came from behind him, so he stopped immediately annoyed and assumed it was one of the guys that was just spending t- that he was just spending time with back at the cabin. Ha ha, you missed me, he says into the <laughs> darkness, but there's no response. He shrugged and he continued his journey. But only a few steps further, another stone sails past him, this oh time gosh. from the hillside. Now he sus- suspects another colleague is in on the prank, so he simply shouts, Knock it off, guys! It's dark and you might actually hit me! He continues walking further, and at this point, he's listening more closely to his surroundings and realizes that there's another set of footsteps other than his own. But they stop when he stops and continue <sighs> when he continues. At this point, he's creeped out. The guys he left back at Cooper Cabin are pranksters, but they're not this sneaky nor silent. Surely, by now, they would be cracking up. Before he could pick up his pace, he feels and hears a large rock fly above his head from up the hill. It lands with a loud splash in the lake. This is so dangerous. Come on, big friend. Jesus, you're going to hurt someone. Violent. So violent. Makes me think, like, is this how they hunt? They just try to, like, knock people out of consciousness and eat them? Oh. It lands with a loud splash in the lake, and the distance covered was about 30 feet. None of the staffers that he was with at the cabin could possibly lug a stone that big that far, so he runs as fast as he can back to the main camp. There he finds me, and he tells me this tale. He told me, it was just like those Bigfoot shows that you watch. It felt like one was stalking me from behind, and like another one was up on the hill throwing rocks. Although he didn't see a Sasquatch, he felt very strongly that that's what it was. From that moment on, we were both much more wary of night hikes on the campground property. And to top it off, the cast of Finding Bigfoot visited a nearby town that was dubbed itself as the Bigfoot capital of Minnesota the very next summer. Coincidence? No way. We don't need convincing that there is a Sasquatch in those woods. No, you don't. No. The fact that it happened the next year, too. Was like they just had to live with it for a year, being like, I know. Bigfoot here. No, it sounds like they knew. And and that was just confirmation. I mean, I'm assuming that all of these kids are like 15 16 that are counselors like maybe 17 and they're walking alone yeah, Sasquatch is scary. stalking them very scary Ugh. the other encounter my brother has had at this camp took place when he was about 11 he woke up in the middle of the night not feeling well and campers are not allowed to leave the cabin at night without a counselor to accompany them but my brother was a rebel and he decided to take himself to the nurse's lodge making his way past other cabins in the dark another counselor spotted him hey where's your counselor counselor little man he asked Sleeping, replied my brother. I don't feel well. This counselor agreed to escort him to the nurse. And the two had some conversation on the way about how my brother's week was going and how he liked to camp. 
The counselor got my brother safely to the porch of the nurse's lodge and allowed him to enter the building on his own. He wished him a good night, and he hoped that he felt better in the morning. The next day at breakfast, my brother tried to find the counselor in order to thank him. However, he couldn't seem to find him anywhere. He asked his own counselor to help him, and he described the man he'd seen. Unfortunately, he never asked the man what his name was, and my brother's counselor didn't know of any other staff members fitting the description that he gave. Oh it wasn't gosh. until 10 years later at the camp's 60th anniversary weekend – oh my god, I already have chills <gasps> – that we learned that his nurse escorts I- – that we learned his nurse escorts identity. Oh my gosh. At this event, camp laid out decades worth of photo albums of past alumni, campers, etc. My brother and I were flipping through the books together when suddenly he gasped, That's him! That's the counselor that walked me to the nurse. Ten I looked years at him later. confused. Because I truly had no idea what he was talking about. Oh my gosh. And that's when he shared this story for the first time. Up until that point, he had no idea that he had had a ghostly encounter. The photo he pointed to in the album was that of the only person that had ever died on the camp property. I won't share his name for privacy reasons, but this gentleman worked as a member of the boathouse in the 60s, teaching kids to sail and maintaining the boats. While sailing the lake with campers, an unexpected gust of wind caught the sail and then, boom, swung around and hit the staff member in the head. Oh this blow gosh. knocked him unconscious into the water where he unfortunately drowned. And 50 plus years later, his ghostly apparition is still doing his job, caring for campers and making sure they have an amazing time during their stay. That's all for now. Thank you so much for reading these stories. See you on the other side, Liz. Oh my God, I'm starting to tear up. I don't know why this is like really getting me. Because that's incredible and it's so sad that this man lost his life, but that he's still there watching over all the campers. Oh, I know. He just cares so much about their safety and making sure that they're You really are. Are you crying? Yeah, a little bit. I'm like trying to keep my eyes open to dry out the tears that started to well. It's just so lovely. (laughs) And I'm glad he's there because I love Bigfoot, but I don't like when Bigfoot tries to murder children at the campground. I know. It's not very nice. I'm just happy that there is a spirit that's so kind and helpful and cares for the kids that's also Mm -hmm. putting in effort and being out there in the night and trying to interfere and help people. Yeah. But it's also just, oh my God, I can't even imagine how awful that was for the campers who were out there with him, for him Oh, you know, to pass so for his family for the whole camp. It sounds like he's a really great guy, and that's just yeah. it's tragic when something I wonder like that happens. If his spirit has seen Bigfoot, like I wonder if Big Feet, Bigfoots. What did we decide? It's Bigfoots. I think it's Big Bigfoots. Okay, if they can see ghosts, because if not, then I wonder if the ghosts are seeing Bigfoots all over the place. Oh, it's like you get you get a leg up, you know? Yeah. They can see the Bigfoots, but Bigfoots maybe can't see them. But I don't know. I don't know. Because given some of the evidence of uh, Bigfoots being potentially interdimensional creatures and being able to cloak themselves and having yeah. all these extra powers, perhaps they too can, can see the actual beings they are yeah they know everything they can do anything they can they can throw massive rocks apparently so yeah how scary to think that that's you know how they yeah, potentially like hunt you know they have it's, bad aim it's though, scary if it's if they threw that many and didn't hit liz's right. brother which i'm glad yeah, it's kind of making me think of orcas like there's a whole coordination like song and dance going into your your prey being the predator it does make sense too now when you think of all those campers that go missing or people that are Mm -hmm. hiking in the woods and people don't really yeah i know what hear it and there's no sign of a scuffle perhaps literally they're just knocked unconscious and grabbed before they can drop to the floor corinne i just had an idea of a movie (sighs) It okay. already exists, but I'm just changing it. I need to write down all of our all of our ideas right now. Hold on. Let me it's pull up Shrek. my notes. Corinne, it's Shrek, but with Bigfoot. <laughs> and you are Princess Fiona, who at night turns into a Bigfoot. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> and you fall in love with the Bigfoot, but you have to decide, <laughs> will you transition full time to Bigfoot to be with Bigfoot? That's a hard predicament. I mean, I haven't experienced the plot of the story yet, but if it's anything like Shrek, there's so many other magical friends to be that's had true. and you can still communicate and chill with the humans. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, then yes. But if I had to cut off all contact with you, with my family, with people in general, I'm not, I don't know. Yeah, I don't true. know if my love with Bigfoot could yeah. prevail. Yeah. It can, yeah. You need more than just you, you two, you know? Yeah. I don't want to completely abandon my life just to. Just for love. <laughs> just for love. No. But it's true love, Corinne. <laughs> Well, we, we'll come up with some arrangement. You know, six months in okay. the woods, six months off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. It's like your vacation home and then, yeah. you know. We'll be one of the couples that, like, don't actually live together, so you sync up a few times a year. Yeah. yeah hey, yeah, yeah. how's it going? How Long have you distance. Been? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This was so fun. Oh. I love encounters. And I, what a great way to watch the sunrise and to wake up for me. I know it's gotten so much brighter in your room. I know. And now I have like a little bit of a shadow on my face from my microphone. A whole day ahead. Well, yes. we will see you next week for a regular episode yes. and encounters. Yes. Because we're doing more, baby. We are. Can't wait. Extra stories, extra spooks. So many stories. Um, we hope you guys follow us on social media and mm -hmm. rate and review us on iTunes because those are very important things for our podcast. And also, we want to be your best friends on social media, so come say hi. Um, we have YouTube. Watch us on YouTube. Hello. Um, yeah. We have TikTok, Facebook, um, all those things. And then uh, Patreon. Merch. Patreon. And merch. Yes. Patreon, check it out. I've, we've tried. We put in a lot of effort to yes. make our Patreon nice and shiny and to yes. give people exclusive content and yes. access to us so yes. we're proud of it we hope you guys like it and if you join that and by rating and reviewing and all that other stuff to support us it definitely helps us with our our many business ideas we yes. have and potential it new does. ventures and moving those things along so thank you for your support all around yes and thank you to Aiden Manning to and Eric Foster and Max Lodian and the entire team at Fire Digital thank you for editing our audio our video our tiktoks all the things thank you for all your work and we will wait i feel like you always you get upset every time i don't do the new version okay we do, do you not want to, to see you. you don't you don't need to i just was gonna like you know mix it up sometimes we do okay. sometimes we don't i'll follow your lead you're like oh no and I'll, just, I'll say it i'll say it okay you, i don't want to break your heart today <laughs> <laughs> We Got really it. do hope that we get to see you on this side. But if we don't, we will see, see you on, on the, the other, other side. side.